Good evening, everyone. Good evening and happy summer, summertime. Hello, my beautiful women of magnificence. Mwah. It is your maximizing coach, Deshaun Antoinette Booker. And I am super duper excited because, yes, honey, I am bringing you yet another episode of the Yummy Cafe. Now, you know me, I've always wanted to celebrate women, right? So the Yummy Cafe is Y U M M E. Your unlimited magnificence equals you and me. So listen, you know, I've always wanted to have a space, a space where I could celebrate women entrepreneurs, right? How did they actually go from having an idea to an investment? How did they turn their passion into profit? How did this woman sit down with a mission and then monetize that mission? How did she do it? You know what? I'm that girl. I need to have the what I call what? The backstage pass, right? I need to understand how did she do it? You know what? A lot of times, ladies, listen, everybody, a lot of times we see women doing their things and the black girl magic and go ahead, girl, and do your thing, right? But what about the process? What about the journey? The journey that isn't always an easy one to follow. You know what? I'm an entrepreneur myself. I love being an entrepreneur, but you know what? There have been many pain points along the way, and I wanted to just throw in the towel myself. I did, and some days you still have and feel that way still. You know why? Because no one tells you about that. We all just see the what? The glamour of it all, right? We see how it looks good. It feels good. It tastes good. We see the selfies, the Instagram, the photoshops, and we see the red carpet. But we don't know what that woman goes through when it's just her one-on-one, -on -one, when she's writing out her proposal, when she's trying to figure out her budget, when she's trying to understand networking and resources and the highs and the lows and still have to pay her bills, take care of her family, and make it happen. And today, listen, praying all of these high gas prices. How are you going to be an entrepreneur? Well, you know what? This space is going to show you just how we do that. How does a woman say, you know what? No matter what, I know that I can be my authentic self. And that's exactly what this space is. I've always admired young, beautiful, old, all type of women entrepreneurs, even when I was a young girl. You've heard me say this story, right? I will sit down and gather all my mother's magazines and put them out in front of me. And I was so excited and so drawn to the women who were featured in the business section. I was drawn to their drive and their determination. I just was their sophistication, honey, and their lifestyle. And I knew that I wanted to also make a mark in the world doing what God called me to do. So this space is exactly for that. It is so that we can talk to the women who have said, Deshaun, I'll give you that backstage pass. I will become vulnerable and transparent and share the beans, honey. I want you to know I'm so excited about the women that have been joining us. And thank you for watching. If you are watching a replay, everybody, right? Go ahead and put hashtag replay in the comment section because you can still put your comments there. Whatever you need to say, I will get back with you. Our guests will get back with you. So don't worry about not being a part of the conversation. If you are watching live, we want you to chime into this conversation. This is not a monologue, honey. It's a dialogue, okay? So I want you to chime in with us because we're giving you some juicy nuggets. It is yummy. That's right, the Yummy Cafe. So listen, get your girls. If they're not watching, have someone come on right now and watch this show because they are going to be blown away. I am always so excited about the woman who is going to share her story today. So listen, without any further ado, let's see who is this woman today. 
Miss LaFay Baker. She is known as the stunt woman extraordinaire. Ooh, LaFay Baker is the first. Now listen, I'm going to pause right there because when we hear that, we sometimes let it just go over our head, right? We are used to hearing about a person being the first, maybe in the news, in a magazine, in history. But here's a woman that has stopped her busy, productive schedule to come on the Yummy Cafe. And she is the first African-American stunt woman to coordinate a big budget project and she's going to talk more about that okay it was hbo special introducing dorothy dandridge starring we know miss halle berry and that was in 1993 23 years ago later lafay La La honey has been doing all of this work on her own baker has performed in the riskiest of stunts some of hollywood's biggest names including angela bassett Regina King, Regina Hall, Alfre Woodard, Loretta Devine, Lynn Whitfield, Keisha Sharp, oh my goodness, Vanessa Bell, Calloway, and many others were working on major motion pictures and nationally syndicated TV shows, including Hannibal, Lethal Weapon, What's Love Got to Do With It, Scary Movie 2, Green Lantern, Fracture, House, and many more. Baker is devoted to diversifying the stunt woman industry as she created and spearheads the Action Icon Stunt Coordinating Conference, design which prepares stunt women on how to become stunt coordinators and co-coordinators. She's also the founder of the Action Icon Awards, which recognizes the achievements of stunt women, actresses, and sports enthusiasts. Woo! All of while benefiting Baker's Diamond in the Raw Charity, devoted to empowering and transform transforming the lives of foster care and at risk teen girls between the ages of 12 and 18 through the arts and STEM, S-T-E-M, education. Baker is dedicated to diversifying the stunt industry. When she's not filming, she's devoted her time to successful, to, to holding conferences and special courses to educate teen girls and women on how to become successful stunt coordinators and performers. Baker also takes the time to honor stunt women. Oh my goodness, I just love what she does. My goodness, I'm so excited. Who pull their life on the line for Hollywood A-listers by throwing this wonderful award ceremony that I spoke to. Some of her awardees have been Patricia Arquette, Maggie Q, Linda Hamilton, Lindsay Wagner, Gail Ann Hurd, Jamie Lee Curtis, Jamie Alexander, Ming Na Wen, Vivica Fox, Pam Greer, Sean Robinson, Layla Ali, and Olympic gold medalist Gabby Douglas. My goodness, right? To her credit, in 2006, she completed the UCLA Film, Television, and Digital Entertainment Media Certification certificated program and have a Bachelor of Arts degree from California State University, Long Beach, Steven Spielberg's alma mater, okay, and she has received her EMBA from the University of Miami. My goodness, I'm not done. And recently, Oh, recently, LaFay Baker, honey, has just launched the stunt woman extraordinaire active wear. That's right. I was there for the phenomenal launching. It was absolutely amazing. This is her brand for the bossy and classy woman living a phenomenal lifestyle. You know I'm excited to bring her into this room, right? I know you're excited. She's phenomenal without any 
further ado, I bring this phenomenal woman right here living in Los Angeles, California. Let's put your hands together and give her a round of applause for the phenomenal, dynamic, amazing, yes, the stunt woman extraordinaire herself, Miss LaFay Baker. Hello, hello, hello. What an introduction. Oh, my goodness. How beautiful. <laughs> How are you doing? On the show. I appreciate it. Listen, it's who you are, it's what you do, it's how you serve and show up for your gift. How you doing today, beautiful? I am just fine as ever and basically trying to keep it moving and get ready for this award show and the nonprofit with our Power and a Voice um, podcast. We're teaching girls how to do their own podcast. Just always busy, I guess I can say, with my team I for the Action Icon Awards. I'm, you know, I'm just trying to um, give back and um, leave a legacy and help other people know that if I can do something, they can do it also, especially my young girls. Because if they see me doing or seeing us doing it, that means they can do it also. That's right. Oh, my goodness. And listen, we are going to jump into all of this. I am just super duper excited about you. You know what? I met you years ago. Do you remember? We actually met when we were both looking for a space for, I was looking for a space for my performing our summer camp and you were looking for a space for one of your, I think it was your conference and we were at the veteran building in Culver City. And listen, LaFay has such an outgoing, beautiful personality. She stopped me, we were in the parking lot area and you just started talking child. And you asked me, what was I looking for and who was I? And I said, you know what I was doing with the young people in the arts. And she started to tell me what she was doing, you know, and this awesome, you know, move that you were on. And I was like, oh my goodness, wait a second. Stunt woman, I've never even met a black stunt woman, right? How many times have you heard that, you know? And so we have just uh, allowed ourselves to continue to have this relationship. And then, of course, she is now. We are Sororors, Delta Sigma yeah. Theta Sorority and so Incorporated, right? So yeah. we are just so excited to share the goodness today. So if you haven't been watching the show, I always have our phenomenal women entrepreneurs take us through just three series of questions that really show us where they were, where they are, and where they're going. Because we always, as I, I said, LaFay, you know, people walk up to you, and I'm sure, you know, you get this a lot where there are just, you know, an amazement, right? They admire what you've done and what you're doing, but there's a journey, right? And how did that journey begin? So I want to just dive right into it, girl, sister girl. Listen, I'm so excited that you're here. I want us to get this conversation going. And we always want to start with, you know, what was your inception moment? Now, your bio is speaks for itself, but there was something that I didn't talk to that I wanted you to speak to personally. Talk about, if you will, as you're talking about your beginning moments or, you know, when did this, you know, become a thing for you that wasn't a thing anymore? It was a purpose, right? And I want you to talk about how you really bridge your fearlessness with your athleticism, right? And that whole thing with the Guinness Book of World Records, I'm going to let her tell you the story. Can you share that with our listeners and our viewers, please? <laughs> well, actually, as a young kid, my father would always say, I would just get on the table and just jump. So I guess I was already preparing myself to be a daredevil or whatever, but I didn't know. And that was a time point, all that. But what really propelled my career in entertainment was being in the Guinness Book of World Records. I was like a national hula hoop champion from Los Angeles. And we had a big um, event that was at Universal Studios and stayed in a hotel. It was my first experience staying in a very nice hotel. In fact, it was the Holiday Inn, which is now the um, Highland. Whatever the hotel is, the Highland, uh, Hollywood Live. I think that's what Yes, it was. yes. Before, I kind of like got big by the bug. And then I was... Um, representing Whammo and doing a lot of talk shows for them and going across the country promoting the hula hoop contest and all that. So at one time that they contacted me, they wanted me to do the Guinness Book of World Records. So I had the opportunity of breaking the Guinness Book of World Records by twirling 58 hula hoops at one time at the age of 12. And that, you know, that that was a long time ago. Now you have a lot of other people who have broken the record, like a hundred and something. They don't really call you back to defend your title, but I'm just privileged and blessed that I was able to actually appear on the David Frost show as a young kid and break wow. the Guinness Book of World Records. And that kind of like propelled my career. And I kind of like got bit by the bug for the entertainment industry. 
Wow. I, I need to just know a little bit about this hula hoop thing. Was that something you were doing on your own, in your own, just as an extracurricular activity? Or were you a part of that, you know, particular group at the moment? How did that, that come about? Well, actually, I was at my cousin's house on 4th Avenue and 54th, and it was Angela's Mesa Elementary School, and I saw mm -hmm. a whole bunch of hula hoops. And I was like, what are they doing, you know? So I went over there, and then I started learning some tricks, and then the coach thought I would, you know, learn very fast, and then we started practicing and practicing and at our house. I even had, like, silver shoes and little outfits and stuff, so... I kind of like started learning new tricks. There were tricks that she would create that nobody really was doing. And we had the Angela's Mesa um, hula hoop group and we were very unique. It was a lot of black girls oh. and that were part of the group. We did the watch parade. We did all kinds of shows. Um, yeah. Sugar Robinson's um, program, you know, mm -hmm. we were really highly active. And my coach at that time was Beverly Lawrence or Evelyn Lawrence. And she was amazing as, you know, teaching us who she could hula hoop, but she can come up with some tricks and tell us how to throw it up and it to your leg and all that. <laughs> so, yeah, that's kind of like how I got bit by the bug. And I kind of like started learning more about atmosphere work and all that. I really wasn't interested in being an actress. I just felt that that really isn't my lane. Yeah. So, yeah. Kind of rise those lines and everybody looking at me like, uh, you know, that's just not who I am. You know, a lot of people are interested, yeah. but there's so many careers behind the scene where you can work more consistently and, you know, go from one show to another and really establish relationships. My goodness. Okay. So when that happened, did you put that on pause and then did you pick it up later as a young adult, you know, your athleticism? Uh, when did you, cause did you go into that for college or after college and how did you begin to navigate, you know, where you are today? Well, in high school, I mean, I was voted most athletically inclined. I participated oh, wow. in gymnastics, um, volleyball and I was a cheerleader. I played basketball for a minute, but I had to let something go. And once I became a gymnast, that little um, tomboy thing kind of went away. And basically I just started doing gymnastics and cheerleading. And then I went to Long Beach State where I was on the gymnastics team at Long Beach State as well. Okay. Um, being, again, being the only black person on the gymnastics team back then, you know, wow. was really, you know, impressive. Um, let me try to see what else. And then I just also perform at the um, Long Beach um, Convention Center for at the basketball games on Hulu. So I was doing all the kind of stuff like that. Um, I also auditioned for the Ice Capades. I kind of like was skating there doing that. So I've kind of like try to do different sports that they say that black people don't do. I've always yeah. been actress and I just like to try things or step outside of my comfort zone and do yeah. things that are different. I love that. My goodness. But that is very different. Now, I'm just going to say this. I, I did drill team in, in elementary school and our drill team uh, teacher, she was brought to the school. She wasn't a teacher. Her name was Gina. I don't remember Gina's last name, but do you know she taught us how to do the hula hoop with the um, with our drill team routines? And we won first place all the time. I mean, I was at Cimarron Elementary School and I will never forget how when we would go to the different conferences and competitions, the people were blown away. We were just doing things, you know, we would hold them over our heads and to the side and move through them. And it was so fun. So I can just imagine what you were doing because that was a whole nother level what you all were doing and people were blown away now let me let me let me just go here so you didn't start off in becoming a stunt woman right you went into what direction first your career was it of course um in the probation well actually i was working as a probation officer when i graduated from college uh, i kind of like Looked very young, so I wasn't able to really secure a job. It took some time. So then the Hulu coach, she told me about probation. And I should apply. I was like, ooh, I don't know if I want to work with juveniles. But I right. applied and I received the job and I started working at Silmar Juvenile Hall. And um, I think while I was there, there was a stunt guy who would always come to the location and he was working overtime. And one day he walked up to me and said, you look athletically inclined. You ought to be a stunt woman. I was like, you are crazy. <laughs> Cause I never heard of it. You know, that's why I like to introduce young kids to these opportunities. Cause if you don't know about it, you can't really dream or even think about it. So he was very persistent and asking me to meet someone at one of the stunt groups. And after a while, I was like, you know, this guy is really on me. So let me try his name was Robbie Robinson. 
And so basically I went to one of the stump groups and I saw the pictures on the wall and I knew I was athletic inclined. So I was like, maybe I could do this, but I didn't really take it seriously. Mm -hmm. But let me reverse. But before, when I was working at probation, when I kind of like left um, entertainment, I did say I want to do something in entertainment. I placed that in my Bible. And I had no idea. And I met three different people in a year's time that were stunt people. The first guy, my girlfriend was dating a, a camera operator. He invited some of her friends to Gladstones. And within um, that particular group, there was a stuntman. So he was telling me about a training. I didn't really take it seriously at the time. Yeah. And then I um, met someone else um, who was telling me basically about a training. And then um, after that, I received a pro. A, a promotion and probation. And within that element, there was a deputy probation officer who actually asked me some questions. And I told him I was thinking about being a stone. I was like, and he said, for real? I was like, yeah. And you know, I was like, whatever. I didn't really know he knew anybody. Come to find out his best friend happened to be one of the top black stunt coordinators. He was training his sons. So he interest, introduced me to him. And then I started training with them in Carson at Dolphin Park. And we would train on Sundays. And one thing that people didn't know, I already had my SAG after cards, if they call it now, SAG after card. Yeah. So I just kind of like went on honorary withdrawal until something came up. And then one day a young lady called me after training with them, maybe about seven or eight months. Do I have my SAG card? I said, yes. She said, there's a job that um, I don't want to do. And are you available? It's something very simple. And wow. I was like, oh, but I was nervous. I was very green. You know, <laughs> I didn't really know that much about the business, but it was right. something like near miss where you have to hold a gun. At the time, I had never even held a gun before, um, but you have to jump out the way of a car. So the highlight of that was they don't tell you all the perks that come with being a stunt woman. Since we're part of SAG, after we kind of like receive a lot of perks. So what happened was this production called me and told me that I had to come pick up my ticket. No one ever told me that I was going to be working on location. So my first job was on location. So I had to go to the studio, pick my ticket up. And the first job was on a show called Heat of the Night, Double in Crystal yes. Park, actually. Yes. Yes. And um, it was very interesting because the next thing they said we have to have a limousine pick you. I was like, oh, you know what? I live five minutes from the airport. I don't need a limousine. I said, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Your time starts from the time you leave to the time that you get there. So it was a little overwhelming at first because I wasn't prepared for all that. I'm kind of a low profile person. Uh, yeah. But anyways, that even gets better. So anyways, I get to the airport and then we start getting on the plane and the lady said, hello, Miss Baker, how are you doing? I was like, well, how do you know my name? <laughs> I never looked at the ticket, you know, I don't really know how the flank, you know, back then, but yeah. you know, performers also get to fly first class. So that was my first experience wow. flying first wow. class. And, wow. You know, I'm coach now, I'm like, oh God, I need to be first class. <laughs> so that was one experience. And then after I got off the plane back then, they had the um the limousine or the the drivers pick you up right at the mm -hmm. gate. So when I got off the plane, there was a big sign, LaFay Baker MGM studio. I was like, oh, wait a minute way too much. So I didn't go directly to him. I went all the way to the walkway and went all the way behind him and tapped on the shoulder and said, I'm the Faye Baker because it was just overwhelming. For me. <laughs> I didn't know, you know, I was like, oh, well, this is too much. They really think I'm somebody. And that was the other thing. When I was sitting in first class, this guy said, and he just kept looking at my face. So I was like, he must think I'm really somebody. He got me confused with someone. But <laughs> I love that whole ambience kind of like allowed me to think, well, maybe I could do this. Yeah. Uh, you know, yes. and then I just kind of like start training a little further and further, you know, and just kind of learning, learning more about stunts. And I would practice with different people who specialize in different sports, mm. sports, motorcycles, driving, fights, fires, fireworks. So I would just kind of like work with those individuals and try to learn as much as I can. You kind of like be a little well-rounded, not like specialize in anything particular, but be well-rounded. Oh. They kind of oh. like call certain people who specialize in certain, but the most of important thing is being a ground pounder, you know, not every, not afraid to hit the ground when you're running, tripping and fall. Those are key um, elements of being a stunt woman as well. Wow. But the more risky stunts, they definitely bring in specialists for it. Okay. Miss LaFay Baker, wait a minute. I am blown away. Let me just ask this question because I, I know everyone else needs to know this too. When you're training, when you first started training with the young man, right, that you introduce you to the to the to the um, stunt trainer, what is it that they're training you? Where do you start? 
Is it running? First, first? Is it weights? No, no, no. We've learned fight scenes first. It's more about camera and how you sell your punch and how you take a punch. That was okay. the important thing. Then there's something called air rims where it propels you in the air. So we work on that. Like say, for instance, somebody's being thrown in the air. It's not like, how can I explain it? It's an apparatus that it actually throws you into the air. And there's something called a ratchet. That's also that pulls you backwards. Uh -huh. when people going through glass, sometimes they utilize that. So we would train and prepare how to actually execute those, you know, simulate them and everything, not actually do them because you want to make sure you're doing that on the set and you have the yeah. safety, all the correct components. Like when we do stunts, it's really about safety first. You know, most people think that we were, we're daredevils, but that's yeah. not true. We want to stay alive, too. So what we do is we try to practice and kind of like learn the ins and out, what could happen and how you can how you can bail out. And those type of things are very, very important. Wow. And so you were you in your beginning stages, right? Were you nervous, afraid? Did you count yourself out? Did you say, no, I shouldn't do this? Or did you know that there was something in your DNA that that was your calling? Well, when I first got in the business, I said, I just, I'm going to do a little something, you know, then I started seeing other people of other yeah. ethnicities that I felt that weren't as talented, like, especially with fight scenes. I was like, well, they can do it. Maybe I can do it. So what yeah. I would normally do is watch everybody do certain things. And then I kind of try to figure out how I can bail out if something goes wrong. That's kind of like how I focus on a lot of things, but um, it's just been an interesting career. And I'm, you know, it's got bit by the bug and, it's been one thing after another. And for me, after I complete one task, I kind of like to move to the next task because I, okay. you know, have that ADH, you know, you can tell because I talk too fast. I get kind of bored real easily and I kind of like need to do something else. But yeah. all the things that I have completed are in the realm of stunts. I love stunts. It's an exciting career. I mean, some of the people I've met have just been amazing. I just love the whole component of stunts and that's why now I'm focusing more on stunt coordinating because now, you know, they want the young girls because those are the ones <laughs> hey. who hit the ground. Yeah. And I'm not trying to hit the ground like I did before because this body does not heal as quickly as it did before. That's, you say that. That's right. I know about that. Well, you need to tell us, if you can, while we got you here, how did you become, how did you land that first role of African-American woman coordinating that first big budget project. How did you land that? How did that happen? Well, one of my best friends, Mr. Eddie Watkins, um, went in for the interview with Halle Berry and Martha Coolidge. And within the interview, Halle actually wanted to crew up all women in key positions. So he threw my name out there and said he had the perfect individual that would actually mm -hmm. do a good job on this particular you know, job because it was a lot of stunts, but there was some fighting going on. He thought I was capable of doing it. So we put my name in. I went on an interview. I did some storyboards for Martha Coolidge and Hallie, and that's kind of like how I received the job. And it was a great experience working with her. In fact, that's one of my highlights of my career, working on introducing Dorothy Dandridge and being the first African-American stunt woman to coordinate a big budget project. Wow. Also, um, was the first African-American to do a television episode, which was Sister, Sister. And I think that was before Dorothy Dandridge. But at the time, of course, I still wanted to hit the ground and be a stunt woman because I felt that I hadn't accomplished all the goals or um, stunts that I really wanted to do. I had this big thing about doing a car head. I always wanted to do a car head. That changed quickly after I had a stunt accident. I was like, okay. My mom was like, oh, no, whatever. But, yeah, so that's pretty much how Started. My goodness. And all of that just happened to uh, allow itself to unfold for you through, as you said, through networking or from one job to the next. Does your name, did your name become a buzz name or was there still a sense of competition? Well, there's always competition. And when I got there, that weren't that many roles for African-American actress when I got in the business. So our stunts weren't how can I say they were actually when you have a nice stunt, they would cut the stunts out for black women. So the stunts didn't really become more prevalent till the next generation for us. OK, OK. Well, let's move into that. I love that. The hurdles, you know, um, in that industry and in, in such a competitive market. Right. And but what was some hurdles that you really had to overcome? In your, in your career, right? As you were marketing yourself, you know, positioning and repositioning yourself for this, making those different directions, you said from 
I did the stunt woman to an actual stunt coordinator, performer, executive producer, right? What were some hurdles and some 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 fallbacks that you that you had to say, you know what, I can overcome this and this is how I choose to overcome it? I think just being African American, trying to prove yourself, and you know, if you step outside the box, there's going to be some type of challenges for you, and things just kind of like escalate. And the most important thing for me is to keep going, you know, and be authentic to your truth and your dreams, and just stay focused. Yes. And I don't know. I just what motivates me when people say that I can't do something that I like to prove them wrong and I continue moving and make things happen. Cause in my world, failure is not an option. And if you believe it, conceive it, then I really feel that you can achieve it. So those are things that I focus on and I keep moving because I do get motivated off for naysayers. That's right, honey. That's right. Let's put the haters in the hallway, honey. We're not going to let them stop us at NT moment of our lives, right? And a lot of times when I'm working with, you know, my clients and, you know, women entrepreneurs or business women or just women who are working with me for personal development, we tend to really get off focus, right? And we let fear get in the way, fear of success, fear of the unknown, fear of comparing ourselves to others. Have you ever had to compare yourself or did people compare you, LaFay, to others in the business? Well, you know, even in stunts, you know, you can be fearful a lot about a lot of things. You know, every time I do a stunt, you never know what's going to happen. So you kind of like try to get you, you kind of like try to condition your mind so that you don't become fearful. But anytime you step out of the box outside of your comfort zone, mm. you don't know what to expect, you know, especially in business adventures. Or So you just yeah. kind of like go for it. I have always been a person I go for it. Like even with Diamond in the Raw, which is a nonprofit, I put up my own money to start that. In fact, I um, created the award show the same year as the nonprofit because I went to the award show and the award show benefited the nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So I want to, you know, um, pursue various um, sponsors to bring them on. So that's kind of like how I operate. I basically try to do things differently and I really may put my own money up at first, but now I'm learning how to actually go after cap venture capitalists and also um, sponsors. Yes. Oh, sponsors. I love it. So those are things that I'm learning, but I just believe you have to try because you never know which one is going to be the success or going to hit the pinnacle or at the top of where, whatever you're trying to achieve. You know, there's so many people who try different things and we just don't hear about the, the failures. You just That's have right. to keep trying and trying. You know, I think that the being a stunt person actually propelled me into my area of actually of creativity by creating the Action Icon Awards, mm -hmm. the Clothing Line, and the Stunt Woman's Journal. I really, I am really a good producer because I I'm good at creating, putting stuff together, and bringing on the right people. When I say producer, you know, I get a lot of trouble a lot of times about the money because I'm trying to make sure I'm staying within budget and you. Yeah. We fall in sync with this particular line, <laughs> which you signed the contract, and so we can stay focused. So That's I can get right. So, yeah, so I'm really a producer when it comes to that. And stunt coordinator is almost like you're breaking down the script, you bring the talent in, you got to put the budget together, yes. and you want to execute the director's vision. And you, most importantly, you want to make sure you have safety first. Yes, yes, my goodness, wow. Oh, I love that. I love the gamut of all of that and that philosophy that you really, you know, are moving in, that you live by. So one of the hurdles that we all experienced in 2020, of course, was COVID, right? We talked about making the pivot and having to shift. And so in your industry, of course, there was a pause, right? In Hollywood. And, you know, we know that. Did that affect you any? Was that a hurdle for you when COVID hit? Well, as an entrepreneur all of us because that interfered with our insurance and then during the process oh. sag after has changed the rules for qualifications like we have in the lack of work because you can't work and then you increase right. the requirement how much money that you have to make that kind of like created a hurdle for some people fortunately for me um i had been coordinating um family reunions so i had already kind of like made my insurance for that okay and i worked on Kingdom's business in Atlanta. So I was fortunate enough to, you know, make the plan one, which is not something that always happens, but now I'm kind of like saying that focus it 
a while back, I was trying to make the transition from stunt coordinating, from stunts to coordinating. I was told that you shouldn't be a stunt person to focus on coordinating. So I was taking a little break from stunts and trying to focus on learning more about coordinating and perfecting and working with my um, friend named Eddie Watkins. He's, he's a major, major. He does like Blackish, a lot of shows, Janky Promoters. Guess who? And I was co-coordinating a lot of those shows with him. And that's where I kind of got, received my experience working okay. with him as well. So, okay, okay. You said something that gave me a, ah, so the a stunt coordinator, are they for all shows or no? Just shows where there's going to be any type of movement, a fight scene, or or how how, how does that look in terms of wanting or needing a, stort, a, a stunt coordinator? Where Wherever there's action, there's a stunt fight scene, oh. stepping off the curb, car work, anything like that. This is the deal. An actress can say that they always, they can do their stunts, but if an right. actress it's hurt, that means production is going to be shut down. So that okay. means they want to bring a stunt person. Person gets stunt person gets hurt, they can always easily replace that person. And that oh. doesn't affect the whole production. Okay. Okay. So when you become the stunt coordinator as yourself, you're coordinating what exactly? What are you bringing? All the action oriented sequences. So you're breaking oh. down the script for, you know, providing the budget to the, um, UPM or the producer, and you also contact the, the different doubles or whoever you need for nondescript. Nondescript is any person of any ethnicity running from a building or whatever in American scene. So you're doing that, and you're going to make sure the double is close, resembles the actress. Like I said, you just want to help the director execute his vision, and yes. you want to make sure there's safety on the set and make myself look good. That's right. So you have a team. You bring your team with you. You're not doing it all by yourself, are you? Well, we have different riggers that come and help us do certain things. When you're in a community, you pretty much know everybody who specializes in certain things, and you bring those individuals in, oh. you know, to rig cars. So there's certain things you have to do to rig a car, like for a turnover. There's certain people who specialize in that. There's certain people you do for firework. There's certain people for special. That's one of my special. I love firework. I want to get into it, but I love firework. People like, firework? Well, yeah, that's exciting. So there's different people who specialize. If somebody comes in and want to do a motorcycle slide, you bring somebody who specializes in slides. They, sometimes people can ride bikes, but they may not specialize in a slide. So oh. you can bring somebody else in for those different type of apparatus, you know, type of stunts to actually execute. Okay, okay. So... In this time, before we move to our next juicy question, in the hurdle moment, has there been a time in your career, right, either as the stunt person, woman, yourself, or the stunt coordinator, or the performer, or executive producer, where it just fell apart, LaFay, like it just didn't happen, or there was a total mishap breakdown? Has that ever happened in a stop production on any level? Has that ever happened for you? Um, Yeah. And what and how do you come back from that? Well, let me just back up. So I, yeah. there was a job that I took. Um, it was a music video. And I was doing a motorcycle jump. And it was in Latigo Canyon. And it was like the, the leather helmets and the goggles. That's the effect they were trying to do. And Latigo Canyon, there's a drop on each side. So when I came up the hill, there was a wall of smoke. And I couldn't see. Apparently, the first two jumps, there was some small smoke or whatever. They wanted more, but they never told anybody that there was going to be a wall of smoke. So when I came up, I couldn't see anything. It was just smoke. And sometimes there's like a, a white line that goes onto the little ramp. It was a very small ramp, but there's a white line when you have smoke. But the guy said that he radioed down. There was going to be a smoke machine. So we normally have safety meetings, and they tell you everything that's going on. So I wasn't prepared that there was going to be a wall of smoke or anything. So anyways, I went kept going and whatever. When I got to close to the small, I kind of like didn't know where I was disoriented. Right. And wasn't able to rep my bike up where I was. It was like I said, it was a small jump, but eventually I hit my chin on the speedometer and um, speedometer handlebars, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Basically, I broke my jaw both at the joint and split oh. my mandible in three sections. So I have three screws in my um, jaw and a titanium plate in my chin. I mean, you can't tell, but um, I was taking Arnica, which is a homeopathic before. Yes. And for some reason that Arnica actually healed me fast, mm -hmm. quickly. And I was in, well, not gonna say, I basically had 10 hours reconstructive surgery only on my mouth because my teeth were hanging everywhere. What? 
Yeah, it was, this was 1996. Um, fortunately, I was already going to Dr. Dorfman before he was Dr. Dorfman to the okay. stars. I was already, you know, you know, referred to him. And he kind of like steered me to all the best dentists and everything. I did have to have like root canals and mm. um, you call it um, veneers. Oh, my goodness. But, like, you can't really tell because they did an excellent job. Yeah, but the key yeah. component of that is that they said they never seen anybody heal so quickly. I think I was only in hospital three days. So I like to tell, this is just me. I always tell people because I never smoked drunk or got high. I think that's one of the key elements to why my cells were so strong. And I think that's yeah. another thing for the youthness because, you know, Lord knows I'm seasoned since yeah. I've been in this about 30 years. So um, I just like to tell people, you know, be careful what you do put into your body. So if anything does occur, That's you, know, you know, same thing with COVID, you know, just by taking herbs and yes. new stuff that kind of like helps everyone kind of like stay focused. And I thank God every day that I didn't, I was, I didn't even get receive COVID and I'm just blessed that, you know, I tried to be healthy and preserve my body and, yes. you know, I know that, you know, taking the herbs now is supposed to be healthy, but sometimes you just have to pay attention to That's right. it and where you're getting it from to make sure it is authentic. That's right. right. That's so, right. Sorry, but God bless me. You know, I didn't really, I came back like within eight months and just kind of like got bit by the bug. And my mom was like, oh no, she went, she was like, this is too much, but I went back and bought me another bike. That's what I was going to ask you. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute, sister soldier. You said I'm not done. I'm going to get up and do <laughs> some more of this. Well, I look at it like this. I worked so hard to become a stunt person. It was yeah. a, lot of work and a lot of training. I just looked at myself as being an injury reserve and I just need to come back and claim my spot. And it right. took because a lot of times when you get hurt, sometimes people don't really want you to hire you back again for certain reasons or whatever, right. especially in the African American community, you know. But my thing was I need to come back and claim my fame and just kind of mm. like do whatever I can. However, there was something back in my mind that I'm not going to try to do no car hit. It did change my way of thinking what type of stunts that I really wanted to do after that accident. Wow. You know what? My hat off to you. My, I mean, wow. I understand and know that, you know, stunt, right? Of, of course. But to hear that story and that you went through all of that. And still in your DNA, it is to serve. And then where you are been serving, what you're doing, which brings us to our next moment, right? Your worthy moment. So many times, you know, women entrepreneurs, we women, because I've, I've worked with them for over 20 years, and they want to become entrepreneurs, right? And they want to do what they believe is their passion. But then something happens and they say, I'm not sure. How did you know this was your worthy moment? And this is where we're going to talk about all of the extensions of what you have been given birth to as a result of your awesome career. How did you know that you were worthy of really stepping into this for the long run, right? Like, I'm not just going to do, be the stunt woman, but I'm creating an empire, which is what we're going to talk about. You are creating, have created your own empire. How did you know this was your worthy moment? Like, this is the lane that I'm supposed to go and this is my purpose this is my calling well, you know what i never thought i had a purpose you know but now i think my purpose is just to be a trailblazer um the stunts i love stunts i had no idea i just create and just try stuff you know but it all was in the realm of stunts and i don't know if i had a worthy moment yeah i just want to like create sometimes i get up in the morning my mind is just running rapid with ideas and things that i could do in fact that's why i have too many things going on right now because i got all this, my mind was just going with the ADHD and just keep moving. If you've noticed, I talk a little fast. I don't mean to, I need to slow down. But yeah, my <laughs> mind is going. So my worthy moment is just, just being me and being authentic and just doing what I love. That's like, worthy. My yeah. passion, my passion. And I recently came up with my passion. Like, what is my passion? Yeah. What is your passion? Yeah, what does it look like? I mean, just I want to be a trailblazer, leave a legacy. Yes. You know, if I'm an African American person, you can do the same thing. I, that's, I'm really true to that, and that's what right. I try to instill in the young girls that you can, if, if you believe it, conceive it, you can achieve it, and it's yes. you can do this and just have dreams because I think dreams are very important by using your imagination. Your imagination is really, to me, so much more than knowledge. So if you have the imagination, then you can focus on the knowledge, and then you can kind of like 
you know, achieve whatever it is that you set your mind to. But of course, education is very important to me. Um, I think that with the program, the Diamond Rod, I always encourage young girls to major in whatever they love, but to minor in communication, journalism, or entertainment, so they can have a plan B, a plan C, because that's really what I'm about, plan A, B, and C, because you just never know yeah. what may transpire. And that's where I am now, even with the two, with the journal, with the Stunt Woman Extraordinary line, clothing, activewear, and the Stunt Woman's Journal. Those are all new adventures that kind of like were launched last year, but yeah. we're just now really pushing it because I'm trying to get the video and the reels. Like I said, I was fortunate to work on King's Business in Atlanta, so I kind of like put yeah. a lot of hold. So now we're up and running with the Stunt Woman's Journal. I can show it to you, the Stunt Woman's Journal. Is yes, cool. yes. So let's, let's talk about the journal. Well, but first, before you do that, go back to the diamond and the raw. Let's talk about that in depth a little bit. I want to talk, I want to give everyone a snippet of each thing, right? So the diamond and the raw focuses on girls in foster care and, or at risk teens. Give us a talk about that. Well, it's all about dedicating. I mean, it's the organization is dedicated to voting the lives of young, devoted to educating young kids about careers behind the scene, foster care and at risk or underserved kids from underserved communities. I think that's what we're changing it because sometimes people have the word at risk. So now we need to kind of like say underserved community, which means everybody. Yes. Yes. So, and basically our premier program was called Conference in the Box, which is a, a leadership and film boot camp. So we'd have guest speakers come in. We have topics that for the week and the kids would take something out of the box. That's why it's called Conference in the Box. They take something out of the box mm -hmm. and they had to pitch they had to create a story around that particular item. So now we work on the communication skills and we teach them how to network. One thing when I got into business, no one taught me about networking or communicating. You know, I would just go yeah. and be, be whoever I am, just yeah. say whatever I need to say. But no one taught me like the etiquette in the business, mm -hmm. how to actually navigate in that type of world versus being yeah. in the inner city. So I need to teach these girls how to actually navigate in another environment I because it. I didn't learn. And I really think it's my responsibility to actually teach them how to excel in any environment. Yes, yes. And so this summer you're doing the, talk about what you're doing online with the girls. Well, let me back up. So, yeah. Um, Consoles in the Box um, Leadership and Film Bootcamp, the girls actually, from taking one item out of the box, we select the best pitch, and then we develop a storyline. The girls collectively work together, creating the script, and we actually go out and shoot it. We have different mentors from the entertainment come in to help, and then we premiere the the final piece at the award show. And that's what we have done for the last um, wow. seven years, 10 years that we've had it. Amazing. And then not only that, we had a program called Make Money in Millions, which was a you know, workshop where kids learn about money and how to save. And then we also have um, Your Beautiful Inside and Out, which was a workshop that taught them about the importance of taking care of your skin, preserving mm -hmm. your skin. I even mm -hmm. had a tattoo artist coming, permanent tattoos versus Temporary, and then all the kids are excited to get a temporary tattoo with henna or whatever. So that yes. was but because of COVID, we had to switch it up a little. So when COVID hit in 2020, I actually have received some funding, so I had to create a program. So we did mm -hmm. talk to girls how to do a podcast. It was called Power in the Voice, a yes. podcast. So yes. we had like seven young ladies who had amazing podcasts. If you go to our website, you will hear the podcast. And the young lady who won she was extraordinary doing her thing and we were so excited about her. So that was one thing, the podcast. And then last year I was fortunate enough to have gold bond, you know, contact oh, me yeah. and indicate that they wanted to feature something with Mary J. Blige about stunts. So a young lady from Canada and myself were able to actually talk about um, our career as a stunt coordinator. And then within that, they want to have a charity that they can sponsor and kind of like parlay everything together. So um, they asked me to create something. So I created the stunt team workshop. So we had young girls for eight weeks were actually able to become a stunt woman for those, that period of time. They would actually have fire in their arm. They were rigged in a car where the car was going like the Fast and the Furious. They did wire work. I love um, it. I love it. 
um, the driving school way out in somewhere, way out, like an hour away, the motion picture driving school. And they actually were able to be in the car while the drivers did 180 slides, reversed. So that was a highlight of those individuals. So that's what we did last year. And Mary J. Blige actually announced our winners on her social media platform. And then Goban did a whole spill and everything. We, we had a nice video presentation. We got a lot of hits. We were featured on the LN show. And they talked about Diamond and Raw. They did the Black Enterprise. I mean, good day. They just talked about it. it was a very a great spill for Diamond and Raw and for stunt women because Mary J. Blige was actually, you know, nominated to be into the Rock and Hall of Fame. I think it's Rock and Roll yes, Hall of Fame. Yes, she was, yes. She was doing a, a show where she's uh -huh. actually doing stunts. So it was like the perfect time for them to reach out to myself and Angel Angelica. Um, Angelica, Angelica, Angelica. Yeah, in um, Canada and Diamond and Raw. So it worked really well. And the kids loved it to the point where people asked me to actually do a stunt, you know, another stunt workshop. Yeah. That required a lot of work. I did it. I reached out to a lot of my colleagues and stunts to could donate their time to actually put this on because it was really an amazing event wow. for them. But this year we're doing Power in the Voice. We're doing another podcast. You know, if you have any kids out there that are interested, they can go to www diamondintheraw.org and sign up. You know, we have some spaces still available, you know, because it's been challenging for these young kids because of social media. It's a little different because everybody wants to be on social media. Right. You know, so That's it's right. been really challenging. Yeah. Let's see. So I'm really trying to encourage kids because this is a way for them to actually work on their communication skills, you know, create their yeah. own brand. Yeah. Not only that, if they are able to sustain um, their podcast, they can seek sponsors and they can help them prepare or gain um, traction or funds for college. That's right. Oh my goodness. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. You know, you're giving back, right? And giving those that foundation for our young people and allowing them to see things they never knew even existed or was an opportunity for them. You know, um, I love that. Now, let's go to the action, right? Your, your action icon awards. Give us some backdrop to that. How did that well, become? The action icon awards has been around, would it be our 11th year coming up? Um, COVID kind of like ceased us, but the action icon awards honors A list celebrities like the Halle Berry's, Patricia Arquette, action oriented enthusiasts, um, sports enthusiasts, and also um, stunt women. So I thought that. We need to honor these women because no one will give them their shine or anything. Mm. So, wow. Therefore, I wanted to create something specifically in the realm of women. I just think that we need to be recognized and for the hard work. And I just yes. think that people need to be informed. And plus, we empower other people. So I just think it's important that we continue to do the work and let these women shine and let these young girls see that these are positive and professional women and they can change their trajectory if they actually fall in sync and learn from these women as mentors. You know what? I am so a part of this team here with you because so often people think that you're supposed to just get it and keep it to yourself, right? Hold on to it. Don't tell anyone the secrets. Don't tell anyone how you did it. Don't make any connections. Don't talk to this person. Keep this circle over there. Keep this circle over there. And I love that you have created a platform to recognize all women in that industry. Um, that's such a powerful thing. Um, how has it for you, how has it been for you, you know, really putting that together? Do you have, oh, you know, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Don't give yeah. me a it's right. a because it's a year round situation. In fact, I was doing that and work as a probation officer. So I was working the boys camp. So I just resigned from the in 2017. I was very fortunate to actually be able to do both career stunts and work in probation because I worked at the boys camp where I lived there. So I had four and a half days off. I did that for like 20 years. Oh, and wow. 20 years. And then I just kind of like kept pursuing. But I, I was like saying, now that I'm off, I was like, how was I able to do all of this? I don't even know how I was doing. Right. It. Working probation, the stunt coordinating conference. Stunt coordinating conference was a lot as well. And the award show. So now I just look back and say, how did I do that? Because yes. now it's like, I feel like I'm not working, but my girl, you working in the morning all the time. You work, you don't have a nine to five, but you working. That's so right. I, <laughs> you know, so I just keep it moving, but I want to kind of like go back because the Action Icon Award actually is Sunday, October 16th at the Universal oh. Sheraton. 
hotel. Last year, we canceled it twice in 2020 and 2021 because of COVID. So we're hoping that we can basically carry on and move forward. And we're going to be announcing who our um, honorees are very shortly. I mean, we had honorees from last year, like Halle Berry was supposed to be a one of honorees. She had confirmed and everything. But right, we had to like cancel it. We were so stoked because yeah. that was the first time I ever had her to actually confirm that she was going to be a part. Hopefully she'll join again. So we're going to reach out to her again. So show is coming up. We always look for sponsors. You out there, you looking for a 501c. That's right. Tax write off, or you are for our cause, feel free. It's um www.actioniconawards.com. So I'm excited. That's one of the um pinnacles of my career creating that. What's the date again? Lafayette, what's the date again? October 16th. Yeah, and if you go to our website, you'll see all the beautiful material that we have. You know, whenever I'm doing something, it's got to be on point. I like that's right. Bougie, bougie, whatever you want to call it, but yeah. yeah. Um, so it's got it. That's how it was for the launch party. You know how I did the launch party. It's yes, I'm about to be getting ready to talk about that too. I'm not, listen. I, I have my 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 bullets. Yes, absolutely. So I'm absolutely. just really trying to, you know, let people see how things can be done and how to go yeah. about doing. It. Also, leaving a legacy, you know, on the line of presentation. Mm -hmm. Let's move into the journal, and then I want to talk about the act, the active wear. Talk well, about your journal that you was well, holding up. Yeah, I came up with the idea I should do a journal. That was like a journal, just writing a book. That didn't make sense to me. So one morning I just got up and said, what would I like to see in a journal? So I kind of like start writing down what I would like to see. So within a journal, we have like what goes in your stomach. The journal is a stunt woman's journey, but men can have it too. I have men out who are trying to buy it as well. But it has the stunt contracts in there. It tells you oh. how much money you pay. You know, it also has terminology, if you don't know certain terms for stunts, I have all the resources, all the different stunt services. Oh, um, I like that. I mean, I have colorful action pictures of stunt women who are well known in the industry. Um, I even have a puzzle in there, it's stunt related. It's an amazing book. It's um, on our website right now. It's like forty nine ninety nine because it's color. It has one hundred fifty eight pages in it. And wow. also have something where you can document what shows you worked on, was it daily, was it weekly, who you work for, your hustle, who you intend to hustle, did you come, did you swear the deal? It's a lot of different things. So I kind of like try to think outside the box what other people may need in yeah. the industry yes. to help them. That's why I came up with the Stunt Woman's Journal. And also the clothing line was something that just wait, wait. Show, show the journal again. We didn't get a chance to talk. I want to see that up close again. <laughs> My woman's journal here. We have, um, let me show you some stuff in here. We have some of our women that are in the journal from Black Panther. Ooh, that goes. Yes. Um, back, we have, you know, stuff, encouraging words. And wow. then we have the contracts, some more pictures of some of the stuff. Oh, my goodness. And then here's for the, something called for the record where you chart chart everything down, like what location you were on, what producer you work with, were you a double utility performer, non-descript rigger, when you arrived on the set, rehearsal. So a lot of times- Oh, we're on the set, come on now. I when love we it. Checks, we don't look at our corresponding with where our notes are when we checked out or checked in. So this helps people also do that and also remember the shows you work. Sometimes you don't remember the shows you worked on because you're looking for the next job yeah. or whatever. So, and you, of course, you can daily record your fitness schedule and all that and how much water you were going to take. Did you get hurt on, on set? Was a medic there? So, it's a, a lot of things that are went into this book. And there's entries, there's affirmations that are in here. Mm. And of course, the most important thing the do's and don'ts of the industry. Yes. And um, how to hustle. So, in stunts, we don't have agents or anything. It's about hustling. Some business, stunt business is a hustle business. So okay. it's all about getting on the set. Before we had 9-11, you could just walk on the set, work, walk on the set and actually look for the stunt coordinator and give them your resume. The things tighten up after 9-11. Oh. And now with COVID is even worse. So, you know, there's different stunt services now or on Facebook where you can, you know, they kind of like have stuff. They're looking for people, but we don't have agents at all. And that's probably why there's no 
awards for the academy at all because people just act like they don't Even know it exists. This you got the makeup, the grip, your hair, but they don't have anything for a stunt performance. So hopefully, with the new regime of people of the academy, they will have a stunt category. But I'm sure it'd be like for a group. So yeah. my award show pretty much is singling out women, giving them their own shine. Uh -huh. so Anyway, that's my stuff most general. I love it. That's honestly, this is one of my, this is my baby because I really put a lot of work in it. It was hard and I really think it's educational. I received nothing but excellent reviews about the book and the, how it looks and the, how colorful it is and just everything that I actually placed in it. And I'm really excited because I did this all by myself. And it was well, like, I, I, I had to go back and change all the email addresses. Some show some um, trains shut down. That was a lot of work to go back and check every each, you know, every one of those that are in the book. Yeah. There's a lot of resource. Even I have films about stunts that are in the back, you know, people who wrote books about wow. stunts. Wow. So it's a lot of stuff in this book that's very informative. And actually, every stunt person knew all needs to have this book. Absolutely. And I think I will, I'm going to purchase one for myself. I will, I don't, yeah, don't leave us out. I love that. How long did it take for you to actually from beginning to end create, create your journal? Well, I was working with this guy named David Simmons and he was actually the mastermind about doing a stunt journal, but I was a mastermind with everything that went into it. So it took some time and I was working with another young lady named Renee, um, Washington. She's an amazing graphic artist. And in fact, she does all my stuff for the award show as well. So it took at least about a year and a half putting everything going back yes, and forth. Yes. There. You know, and then because I was actually working on the shows and it just took me a little longer. That's but right. I'm really excited and it's here now and I'm excited to just actually get it out and keep it moving. Congratulations. Congratulations. That's a you are. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, we have the best here on the Yummy Cafe Trailblazer Legacy right here. Ms. LaFay Baker, introduce and tell us about the extraordinaire active wear. Oh, yeah. So um, <laughs> yeah. we're kind of like just we stumbled on that. So. The guy said, I need you to have products for your website. And it was like the journal, speaking engagement, and T-shirts. So the next thing I know, he had sent me a, a marketing proposal, 25 pages. I was like, oh, shoot, this is a business. And he signed the website. So he had taken all the action images. Of my niche is that I have action-oriented images on my clothing line. That's what makes me stand out where it's a girl, two women fighting or somebody on fire, somebody doing a motorcycle. Wow. So those are the images that I would have on the clothes. So I started off the clothing first with just the two women fighting Okay. at the moment. But I have these other images which are in the book. So that's where my focus is. Eventually, I want to kind of like move to the next level where I can really customize and have some dynamic fashion because I'm all about the fashion. Yeah. And so um, the clothing line. We have blazers and we have t-shirts, caps. And like I said, most of it basically is the images that are on it. So if you go to www.stuntwoman.shop, you will see the clothing there. And we welcome you to go and purchase some items. I'm excited about that. Yes. I'm, I'm going to show this. that. We have that link as well. And I'm going to say I am a witness. I was at the launch for the active wear and the fashion show was phenomenal. Everything was impeccable under the beautiful white uh, rooftop. Honey, you had us there in style and grace and class of sophistication. All the models were wonderful and the clothing active wear is gorgeous. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. I, we are so proud that you are part of your community, our community, Miss LaFay, honey. You are doing it. You are certainly leaving your legacy. You're certainly creating that. And you are a trailblazer in this industry. I want you to know that. And I'm excited to know you, to see what you're doing, to hear your journey. Because as we said earlier, a lot of times people don't know. They just think that, oh, I can do one thing. But you've been giving us and sharing with us your journey. And then one thing you said, you said, you know what? I've done this. What else can I do? What else can I do? What else can I do to build and to build upon that? And that's what she's showing us and speaking to us about. And I am just loving the journey and loving your testimony and loving your transparency. And we're going to move into, I always have the beautiful woman entrepreneur talk about 
her three journey words. What has kept her, kept her on this path, right? And what does that look like to her? So, the fact, talk about these three words here, honey. You know, these three words that has kept you going. Well, of course, courageous is to me is being daring, okay? And always stepping outside the box and, you know, never doubt, never doubt your own um, authenticity or your truth, you know, because yeah. people don't believe in you, but you still have to keep going. Because mm -hmm. I remember when I first got in sense, somebody told me, that's stupid. Why would you do that? That doesn't make sense. As soon as that person said that, yeah, I'm, I want to say the next day, somebody called me for that first job on location. It's rarely do you get a job on location. And I was there for Sunday and I didn't even go on the set till Thursday. I'm just kicking in my hotel, waiting, getting paid. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you're just there because you never know. They never know when they don't call you for that Sunday, depending on the scene. Okay. So that, those, that's courageous, actually being daring, stepping outside your comfort zone, stepping outside the box and never doubting your own truth. That's mm -hmm. what that falls in the line of courageous. So as far as relentless, it's being intentional and deliberate, you know? For yes. me, that's very important. Relentless, that's what is really needs. Relentless no matter what. No matter just what? Like, no matter what. Because I always say failure is not an option for me. Yeah. I just keep going. I never give up. Um, because I must have got that from my dad, I guess. I don't know. But <laughs> never give up. Because you're going to always have people who don't believe in you. So just mm. be relentless yeah. in your choice, your that's dream, right. your passion. Whatever you're doing, just be that. I love it. I love it. Powerful. Oh, okay. Um, I would say by any means necessary. The word fierce means I'm going to do it by any means necessary. But whatever I do is going to be classy and sassy. Sometimes people look at stunt women as being like this masculine or whatever. Yes. Sometimes I just convert. I put on my shorts and my combat boots. But there's time for me to put on a fashion show or something. I'm going to look glamorous and kind of like walk in on a statement because I have my own style. But, yes. you know. I look at it as being fierce. When you walk in the room, people looking like at you trying to figure out who is that person and what does she do? Because most people don't even know that I'm a stunt person. Or when I say I'm a stunt person, they don't really believe it until they see me doing an article or TV or news special or actually see me at work. So they just don't believe it. And I yeah. see people low profile. But again, <laughs> most stunt women are not masculine, you know, because they're doubling the actress. Uh-huh. I get it. I get it. Courageous, relentless, and fierce. And you're absolutely right. I've seen you, honey, in your fierceness, honey. I've seen it. And I'm so glad that you talked about it. It doesn't have to be one or the other. You can embody all of that, all of that. And these are the words that have kept you going. I'm just hoping that everybody's writing down your notes, right? Again, if you're watching this show, you're watching the replay, go ahead and put hashtag replay and let us know that you're watching it you have a question a comment a suggestion if you want to give a high five to what you heard today do that we'll get back to you i promise that we will as we move on we're clip moving to a close here i hate that we're doing that but she has dropped so much the faith you've dropped so much into our spirits today so many nuggets and so many takeaways right we want to make sure that everyone can still get you know information from you and be a part of you if you're on facebook she's on facebook at LaFay Baker. Okay, so you can go ahead and uh, make sure you uh, send her a friend request there. You can also hit her up on her Instagram at Baker LaFay. You can also be able to see all of what she's doing there. But you heard her talk about other things. So her website, LaFayBaker.com. Write it down. You don't want to miss out. You heard she's having her up and coming award ceremony show. You don't want to miss that, right? So you can always be able to connect with her. And that is the action icon. Awards.com and October the 16th, right, LaFay? That's what we said. And so all the information is here on this website. Make sure you join and get your ticket there because you don't want to miss it. I want to know who is going to be your next uh, awardees, but I know that's kept on quiet. Can we get a sneak peek or a clue? No, not right now. <laughs> I want to sign off on something. Also, I just want to say the most important thing in everything, trusting God's timing. Yes. And I feel kind of like live off of Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust the Lord with all the heart, lead not understand, acknowledge him. He'll direct thy path. That's, That's right. one thing that I live by before I do each stunt or even fly. I actually mm -hmm. have that somewhere on my body. So I just want to 
let people just trust the timing because sometimes we get off centered yes, and I we do. just need people to encourage us and we need to either pick up some affirmations on YouTube and just redirect our thoughts. And, you know, I'm with so much going on, my mind is always kind of like going back and forth and I need some type of encouragement. So I want to encourage everybody to actually check out Proverbs 3, Proverbs 3 and just trust God's timing. Yes. And I think my benefits would be plentiful if I didn't trust his timing to where I am at this moment. Yes. I'm so glad you said that, you know, um, because what do you say to LaFay, to those young girls and young women and the women who are seasoned, who want, you know, to branch out? What do you say to them when they say it's not happening fast enough? Do I give up? It's not happening. I don't see anything. I don't see anything, you know, happening as a result of my work. What do you what do you, you know, have? right now? I see a lot of young people. They want everything right now. It's a yeah. generation of now, but you have to work hard to get where you need to be. Most people think these rappers and actors, they just became stars overnight, but that's, they worked hard yes. and you, you must put the work in, in order to achieve or master whatever it is, you know? So I just think it's important that you become diligent, dedicated, disciplined, and determined. Those are, you know, I used to say I have three D's, dedication, determination, and being disciplined. So that's yeah. very important. And just stay true to yourself and go after your dreams. Don't let yes. anybody go after it. I don't care how big they are. But one thing you don't want to do is have regret. At least you can say you tried it yeah. and you won't have any regrets. So I just encourage you know everybody to go after your dreams. Enjoy life. Life is very short. Just make it happen. And education to me is very important, whether yes. it's in the technical yes. side or academic That's side. Right. Because you want to have a plan B because you know there's always a process of elimination. So you want to have the skills, training, and the education. That's so right. That's right. Well, listen, wait, I want to make sure that they also get the stuntwomansjournal.com. You saw that beautiful journal that she showed us, right? If you want to make sure you get that, yes, get it, get it. You can get it as a keepsake. You can get there's affirmations in there, all those wonderful things in there, right? First of all, I hear and see that it's inspirational, it's motivational, right? So it's not just for the stunt woman, okay? It's for the phenomenal woman, right? So make sure you go here, you know, and she has at a very reasonable look to me that price is very reasonable i think you need to you know probably pull that price up honey i'm just saying because that journal looks phenomenal okay and then also if you want to shop for that active wear honey www.stuntwoman.shop you want to make sure that you get all of those wonderful cute sexy fierce act i call what is it extraordinaire active mm -hmm. wear Right. So you want to make sure you get you do that. And listen, we're always giving you our takeaways. And she gave you her takeaways that to remain really diligent and surrender to God's timing. That's so important, you know, so important. And do you want to just give them anything else before we release everyone to their beautiful evenings tonight? LaFay Baker, anything you want to leave the audience with any of your pillars of strength? You gave us your scriptures. Or is there anything else you want to add to that? I love it. Yeah, I think the, the another important task is I'll focus on self-care. Mm. Okay, sometimes we get so caught up, and I'm notorious for this, and I don't take time for a little R and R for myself. But we, in order to be successful, you have to have your health. That's and right. mental health right now is very important. Sometimes oh, you can yes. work and work, and you don't even know that you're exhausted. So oh, take same. time for yourself. Have a little R and R. I know it's difficult, but self care is very important. I'm so glad you said that. Listen. I'm so grateful to you being with us this evening for us being able to get that backstage pass. This woman is busy, 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 busy. She's productive. She's doing her work. And if you don't know about the new show she talked about, Kingdom Business, that's new. And she, that's new. That isn't something. And, and to know that you were, you jumped on that, you're doing that, you're doing a wealth of things and you're still giving back to the community. You're still reaching back and giving to our beautiful undeserved communities, our young people, our young girls, and to those in the stunt industry. I'm so grateful that you said yes to this time tonight and that you were available. This woman is busy, everybody. I'm just letting you know she's doing Doing her thing okay and that's what we want we want women here to come on the show to really show how they can 
do what God has called them to do, continue to build on that, and then give back as well. So I'm so grateful to you, my soror, my beautiful sister, my colleague, my sister in all things moving and growing. Thank you for inspiring us, empowering us for your words of wisdom and dedication. I have been definitely inspired and motivated and I'm always am by you. She's such a beautiful spirit. When I was just off of uh, my surgery, she told me, girl, if you don't stop text messaging me and go and lay down somewhere, I said, okay, the Faye is not playing. You were like, goodbye, stop texting me to shine and go rest. So she means that self-care because she did it to me, okay? And I did exactly what you said. And so I just want everyone to know that your journey may take different paths, but just know that your destiny is yours, okay? And we are here to support you, and thank you for watching the show. As I always say, make sure that you are always maximizing your magnificence. Until next time, mwah, smooches and deuces, and we'll see everybody soon. Thank Thanks you for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you for being here with us. Yes, yes.